Hello everyone, my name is Jennifer Terry. I make Philippine travel updates. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. February 1! Hello February! Is it just me? Or did January felt so long? It felt like a whole year. But anyways, February has been good to us. Today was the start of the no quarantine upon arrival for all fully vaccinated arriving passengers. Um, February 1, no, it's still Filipinos, Balikbayans, and foreigners with visas are allowed. But on February 10, it will be different. The Philippines will finally open our borders to non-visa required nationals. But I'm sure you guys are curious, anong nangyari? So, to those who arrived today, who landed today, what was the process, the requirements? Is One Health Pass still needed? And... Uh, can our families pick us up? Well, I'm happy to share Garnet's experience. She arrived today and she, according to her, just prepare your One Health Pass QR code, your proof of vaccination and negative test result, PCR, all smooth at the airport and your families can pick you up. She uh, filled up the One Health Pass, although the One Health Pass asked for her hotel, she just randomly um, selected a hotel and even a testing lab but according to her don't worry just fill it up and they will check it upon arrival at the airport what's important is your address your philippine address carlo also landed today from canada he arrived through a philippine airlines flight vancouver to manila according to him just prepare again one half pass negative test result and the vaccination certificate. So what was the process at the airport? According to Carlo who arrived today, first up is you go to the Bureau of Quarantine Desk where they will check your vaccination card or certificate and your negative test result. Yes, the negative test result will still be checked, no? Although na check na yun ng airlines, if verify lang ng BOQ. If your vaccination certificate and negative test result are successfully verified, tanggap na, approved, then immigration, then pick up your luggages, then by exit. For you exit, there will be final checking and one health pass QR code. Then customs, you know, you just give the slip that was given to you, the custom slip. And after that, that is done. According to Carl who arrived today, the steps took about 30 to 45 minutes. It will depend, no, uh, how many people are there. If are there are flights na kasabayan nyo, you may have to wait. Pero, I mean, no complaints. Basta walang quarantine, right? Sounds really good. And according to Carlo and Garnet who arrived today, they were picked up by their families. Carlo was picked up by his, fetched by his cousin. As long as there is no LGU restriction, yes, your family can pick you up. Yes, you can avoid, you can avail Grab or uh, airport taxi drivers, okay? So Jennifer, what to follow? Should we do home quarantine? Well, you should listen. To your LGU what your LGU will say what will their instruction will be then you will have to listen to them okay LGU rules prevail kung gusto ng LGU ng home quarantine at monitor talaga kayo then you have to follow it if your LGU is lenient and will not monitor you and says you're good to go then I will not say it, but you have read my mind already, okay? Now, do we need to register to One Health Pass? It is very clear. Yes, we still need to register to One Health Pass. And actually, there are updates on One Health Pass. While there have been questions on the lifting of restrictions, no? Whether this reopening is 100% sure, whether could the Philippines... Uh, revert their decision would uh, call off the reopening now there have been questions from senator um, nancy bina and a public health professional and should we be worried ibabalik ba yung quarantine ikakancel ba yung reopening i don't think so do not get worried guys i know uh, some are still skeptical doubtful but do not doubt this reopening this lifting of quarantine is is pretty solid is Sure na sure na talaga. 
In fact, the IATF defended their decision. According to Dr. Edsel Salvania, he is the technical advisory group infectious disease, like the top expert of the IATF. According to him, yes, we recorded uh, no, record high cases and the hospital admissions increased slightly, but that is now fast decreasing. The decisions they've made were carefully, carefully you know, discussed with their experts and vetted with all their expert groups. And they are not the only ones doing this. According to Dr. Adsel Salvania, we looked at UK and Denmark. Their cases are decreasing and we always watch what they are doing. And we are only doing this to the fully vaccinated travelers because they know that only unvaccinated have likely chances of having mutations of variants of concern, diba. Right? So yes, um, believe it or not, it's here and it do not get worried. And in fact, the Department of Tourism, they're gearing up for the entry of foreign tourists. According to the Department of Tourism Secretary Puyat, she has reassured foreign tours that they are closely monitoring the compliance of tourism establishments with health and safety protocol that this reopening will, will not cause a surge because we will follow protocols. And this uh, reopening, huh, tourism workers waited for this for, almost, uh, for more than two years. They will not waste this opportunity, this chance that they've been given. And for foreign tourists who will be coming to our country, just follow our protocols. Mask wearing is a must, indoor or outdoor. Okay? And you may find yourself having to present a QR code or your vaccination card or certificate upon entry in establishments. Just follow, no? <laughs> I, I know some of you may not be used to wearing masks anymore, but hey, it's, it's still required here in the Philippines. So just comply, okay? We don't want trouble. <laughs> and even the Bureau of Immigration released a press release today saying that they are bracing for the reopening of tourists as more immigration men recover from COVID. Yeah, a lot of their um, immigration officers got infected, but the cases are really declining in the country. Today, we reported only 7,000, if I'm correct. That's big difference compared to like a week ago, two weeks ago. The cases are really declining. According to the Bureau of Immigration, they are ready and they have the available manpower to address the projected increase in passenger volume in all their airports. They have formed a reserve team of immigration officers who can be tapped anytime to augment and assist frontliners at the airport if there is a need. Okay. Reminder that February 10, we will open to non-visa required nationals, okay? It's not about your country of uh, origin. It's about your passport, okay? Your nationality. Let's say I am a non-visa required. Let's say I'm Australian, but I am living in China. China is a visa required country. Do I need a visa? No, because my passport is non-visa required. For example, a foreign national was asking me, he is a Pakistani living in Kuwait. Kuwait is non-visa required. However, his passport is Pakistan. And Pakistan nationals need a visa to enter the Philippines. So it's not about wh what country you are coming from. It's just about your nationality. What's your passport? Okay, the power of passport. That's what it is. <laughs> and these are the non-visa required countries or non-visa required countries. So uh, fully vaccinated foreign nationals, foreign citizens of these countries may enter our beautiful country starting February 10. So there are 157 countries on this list. And majority, majority of you guys will be allowed to stay here not more than 30 days. Just as long as you comply with your visa conditions and your allowable stay. I know that a lot of you will only be allowed to stay for... Um, not more than 30 days with a visa that will be given to you upon arrival. Jennifer, I want to get married in the Philippines. Jennifer, I want to stay longer. I want to stay longer with my Filipina. Can I stay longer than 30 days? Yes, you can. So before your 30 days is up, go to the Bureau of Immigration office to apply for a visa. Okay, you can apply for a 9A visa, stay here for another 60 days or for another 90 days. 
You can extend your stay. You can extend your stay, okay? want to emphasize that. Now, it has come to my attention, thanks to my um, YouTube comment moderator, Sam, also my friend. Shout out to you. Um, he mentioned that uh, one foreigner commented on my video encouraging other unvaccinated foreigners to use fake vaccine cards. Do not do that. You might go to prison, be blacklisted, forever not allowed to enter the Philippines. Get vaccinated or wait till unvaccinated tourists will be allowed. And when? Who knows? We don't know. But yeah, um, that is all for this video, po, and that's all for the update. It is good news that February 1, finally, no quarantine upon arrival. And um, for those with domestic flights, yes, you can proceed with your domestic flights. Just give ample time. I would suggest no, uh, the gap between the international arrival to domestic flight, siguro magbigay kayo ng at least 2 hours, no? 2 to 3 hours, that should be more than enough for you to prepare for your domestic flight because there is still verification process at the airport. Wag yung 30 minutes or 20 minutes lang na layover, ha? Kasi baka hindi po kayo umabot kasi there is still verification process and if there are many, many flights na kasabayan mo, it, that may take longer than 45 minutes. Okay? Just I want you to be aware of that. And comply with if there is any domestic flight requirements. Your airline should email you the requirements actually. But this is all the update for today. I'll see you in the One Health Pass tutorial video. We'll talk about the update on the One Health Pass. Stay safe po kayo and don't forget to like this video. It supports the channel. I'll see you guys. Bye!